Right, first things first, Motown Customs have asked me to let everyone know that the black version of the Union Jack throttle body covers are now available. So if you've been waiting for them, Motown have now got them in ready for sale. And for those of you with a T120, a Thruxton, a Bobber or a Speedmaster, this very pair is up for grabs in a Motown prize draw details at the end of this video. Right, so let's get on. Now I've been looking forward to this video. Back in the early 1980s, the Italian motorcycle firm La Verda had their 15 minutes of a fame with what was arguably their most successful motorcycle, the La Verda Jotta. Now one of the key features of this particular motorcycle were its handlebars, because unlike anything that came before it, and in fact anything since, they were fully adjustable. This meant that you could configure your handlebars to suit your personal preferences. If you wanted to use the bike for touring, you could adjust the handlebars to touring handlebars. If you wanted a more racy look, you could adjust them to become dropped handlebars. In fact, you could have them just about anywhere you wanted, from straight to sit up and beg. And Motown have paid homage to the Laverda Jotta by bringing out their Jotta 2.0 handlebars. Now basically, these handlebars arrive in five pieces. You've got your central clamp bar, a riser to fit on each end of the clamp bar, and then what I suppose equates to a clip-on for each end to actually mount your levers and your grips to. Now Motown call it the Jotta 2.0 because they've improved it slightly. Now the bars have been made from a high quality steel. For protection against the elements they've been powder coated in a satin finish black which matches in nicely with other parts of the Bonneville. Where the different components meet and to allow for adjustability, each component has a male and female toothed joint and Motown have made these teeth a little bit finer than the originals to allow a greater and more gradual degree of adjustability possible. Each joint's held together with a 10mm stainless steel allen bolt and when these joints are tightened up the whole thing becomes solid just like a conventional pair of handlebars. Each end of the handlebar features adjustment for both drop and reach. They are a legendary design famous for the versatility and practical use. Which makes me wonder why motorcycle manufacturers over the years have not made more use of this design. For the purposes of this video I decided to go with the motor handlebar bridge clamp or dog bone as we used to call them in my younger days. And this one's anodized in a satin silver finish. It's the usual motor precision quality CNC machine from aircraft grade aluminium billet. Fitting these is really easy, in fact it's arguably easier than fitting a pair of standard rigid handlebars. I'll quickly go through it with you. Now I have the Halcyon bar end mirrors fitted, but either way it would probably be best to remove your mirrors before you get started to stop them getting damaged while you're removing and reinstalling your lever brackets. Once you've got your mirrors off, cover your tank over with a towel or something similar just to protect it from knocks and scratches. And then just loosen off the clamps for your switch gear and your levers so that they'll move freely. Now you're not going to be able to remove these with the handlebars in place. So once you've slackened them off, it's time to remove the actual handlebar clamps. It will be necessary to remove those clamps completely in order to facilitate this installation. Once you've done that, you've got freedom of movement with your handlebars to be able to actually slide off your switch gear. On the right hand side your switch gear and your throttle assembly should all slide out as one piece. On your other side, the left hand side, the hand grip is actually fitted directly onto the handlebar. Now these can be a bit of a pain to get off and I've seen people go through all sorts of trouble to get them off. If you've got compressed air at hand this is easy. Just charge your compressor up Put a blower nozzle on the end of your hose and then just insert the end of the nozzle slightly into the back of the hand grip. Pull your trigger and what this actually does is it gives you a stream of compressed air between the hand grip and the handlebar and the whole thing literally just floats off. Once you've done that, remove your switch gear, leave it carefully hanging down by the side of the bike 
and it's time to get the first part of your Jota handlebars clamped in place. Now Moton advocate that there is no right or wrong way round for fitting the clamp bar. If you want the handlebars further back towards you, you can fit it so that the clip-on clamps, if you like, are facing towards you. This will bring your bars back by about an inch, an inch and a half. Personally, I wanted a sort of a cafe racer look, a lean forward feel to the bike. So I had fitted it with those joints facing forwards, but ultimately the choice is yours. Now, fasten your clamp down loosely so that you've still got some easy freedom of movement with this clamp bar. Then take some measurements on either side and make sure that you've got it totally central then tighten it down fully. Once you've done that, it's time to put your actual handlebars on and replace your switch gear and levers. As I said earlier, this is significantly easier than with a standard pair of handlebars. Simply insert your clip-on part into your switch gear and then offer it up to the socket and fasten it in place using your 10 mm Allen bolt. Then repeat the same process on the other side. Don't tighten everything up fully to start with, just make sure it'll stay in place while you adjust everything and get it how you want it. Obviously there is going to be a certain amount of trial and error involved in getting your positions exactly right. Refitting your left hand hand grip, again with compressed air, can be just as easy as when you removed it. Just get it on half an inch or so, get it started and then do the reverse of what you did to get it off. Again, you'll get a cushion of air between the handlebar and the grip and it'll just slide straight on. Now, ordinarily, once you've done this, get your mirrors back on and you're good to go. But there were just a couple of little finishing touches I wanted to do before this part of the project was complete. Now, just going back to the levers on the T120 that I changed a few months ago. I hated the standard levers and these are pretty much the same animal. The cheap and nasty and I felt that we just needed to go a little bit more upmarket with some replacements. Now I sourced a quite a nice pair of clear anodized adjustable levers, just a generic set from Amazon. They are actually pretty good quality, in fact the far better quality than the originals. At a distance they don't look much different but when you get close up they've got a nice herringbone pattern machined into the face of the lever with a black adjuster very similar to the ones I fitted to the T120 a few months ago except these are full length ones and they're matching quite nicely with that bridge clamp that I've used to fasten these handlebars down with. Now whilst I was at it the clutch cable fitted to this bike was the original clutch cable. At over seven years old it was feeling a little bit notchy so I took this opportunity to replace it with a slinky glide clutch cable from Wiimoto. Very simple and straightforward installation and the clutch does feel a lot better better after putting it on. Now when you've finished make sure that everything is fastened up and tightened properly. The last thing you want are levers shifting or even your handlebars moving around on your first test ride. Go out for a cautious run, make sure everything's working as it should and nothing's moving around. Then come back and recheck all your fasteners again. Now these handlebars don't look like much when you take them out of the box and first put them together. In fact, to me, they just look like some small pieces of scaffolding. It's only when you get them on and you get all the handlebar furniture back on them that they really start to look the part. Where I've got these configured is in a sort of a cafe racer-esque, slightly dropped and slightly swept back almost a gullwing configuration and to me the look and feel really nice the only thing i may do in the future is have a look to see if i can source some rubber or plastic bungs to go into the sockets where the allen screws fit just as a finishing touch Right, so those Merton black throttle body covers. These have just been fitted for the purpose of this video, they were on for about half an hour and Merton are offering them in a giveaway. So all you have to do to enter is in the comments section of this video, just leave the model of motorcycle that you own. 
and providing that the model that you own is a model that these throttle body covers will fit you'll be entered into the draw and I will announce the winners in the next episode of the Payday Project series in two weeks time. Once again thanks very much for watching and I will leave a link to the product description for all the Motone goodies that I've shown today in the video description down below. Now that's about all I've got time for this week. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that you found it useful. If you have enjoyed it please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I'm back again on Friday where I'll be announcing the results of the Trackology giveaway draw and the names of the winners. So until then please ride safely and I'll see you soon.